that happened. How are we on lighting? Are we good on lighting? We might be good on lighting. I think we are. Okay, testing, testing. Okay. <laughs> ah. You know, that would have all been really cool if I had gotten that original keyboard to work, but I got the mouse to work, so, you know, eh, yeah, eh, you win some, you lose some. 8-bit and 16-bit computing has been around for so long that replicating it in software with near 100% accuracy is almost trivial. As a matter of fact, it's so trivial, you could, let's say, create your own retro gaming console in a language as lightweight as Lua. I mean, people write emulators for consoles all the time. What if someone tried to write an emulator for a computer that was never made. I mean, it could be built with game development in mind. Easy to just jump in and get started. You could have it include its own development suite with built-in code, sprite, and music editor. Maybe create your own virtual game cartridges. Perhaps even a little built-in digital storefront for easy distribution. This is Pico 8, the console that doesn't exist. More on that in a bit. Now, the official website and everyone else calls Pico 8 a fantasy console, but I don't know if that's what you should call it because this is what your Pico 8 boot up screen looks like. Wait, it sort of looks like a command line from a vintage computer, like a C64 or an Amiga. Hello world, more like hello depression. You and I are both kind of right to think that. <laughs> Remember what I said about included development suite? Well, if we go ahead and just hit escape, you'll see that's exactly what we have. All the things I mentioned before, like the code editor, sprite creator, and music and SFX maker. Oh, and of course, a map maker. Similar to what I described in the beginning, Pico 8 runs similarly to an emulator, but unlike most emulators, it's not emulating anything. The system is all made up by this one company called Lexoloff? I don't know. I'm American. That sounds like a pharmaceutical company. But but it's not. They make software. To take it from the official website, it has all the parts of a regular console, but without the inconvenience of actual hardware. And you know what else? Getting started making games for this thing? isn't a difficult task either. For one, all the games are written in Lua 8, a game-making focused language similar to Lua. It's a very lightweight, easy to learn programming language. Look, a port of Doom called Poom. Doom really does get ported to everything. So let me go ahead and just load it into memory and then hit escape and boom, all the source code is there. That's the kicker. With languages like Lua, everything is exposed, making games very easy to, let's say, make mods for or take the framework of any Pico 8 game and, I don't know, make your own game based on the engine someone wrote for their game? Now here's the much needed disclaimer, and this isn't one of those stupid don't download ROMs you don't own disclaimers. No, this disclaimer is about respect. Now a dev worked hard on making their games and was nice enough to include it in Pico 8, and they knew you could look at the source code. so. How about you reciprocate that kindness by not stealing their game and code and actually being original and only use their code to make something transformative or at the very least credit them and make sure people know where you got the code from. That's honestly it. All right, disclaimer over. I wanted an opportunity to talk about hardware or lack thereof. So technically there is hardware of sorts. There's of course the hardware you run it on, also the virtual hardware you're emulating. You see, one of the fun quirks of Pico 8 is to purposely create a limited development environment to simulate dev conditions of computers of old. So what are some of those virtual hardware specs? Well, first of all, we have a 16-bit virtual CPU that runs at 8 megahertz. We've got a virtual sound chip with 64 deferrable chip blurps for audio, as well as only 64 kilobytes of RAM and a maximum cartridge size of 32 kilobytes. As for what the built-in software of the development suite is capable of, the sprite editor has support for 128 8x8 pixel sprites with 16 colors, 32 with bank switching. When it comes to available platforms, Pico 8 is available for a range of software and hardware combinations, including Mac, Windows, Linux, both 32-bit and 64-bit, Raspberry Pi, once again, both 32 and 64-bit, and the cool but defunct Pocket Chip. There is a web-based version of Pico 8 that provides access to all the editors, though it lacks exporters and permanent storage features. Standalone app versions for iOS and Android are planned for release after version 1.0, but the release dates are not yet confirmed. For unsupported platforms, the web version can actually be a valuable option if you have access to a keyboard. Pico 8 also supports GPIO, so it could be the perfect platform for some of your Raspberry Pi or Android-based handhelds, like the Pow Kitty or an Abernick. If you are someone getting into game development, and many are these days with the rise of creators such as Pirate Software, then the limited development environment of Pico 8 
may be for you. For my purposes, I actually wanted to emulate a vintage computing environment. So what I actually did was set up my Raspberry Pi 4 with Raspbian OS to output to composite using the 3.5 millimeter jack. And then I used that to output to this CRT television set. I also used a USB PS2 adapter to utilize the old mouse and keyboard. Obviously, I couldn't get the keyboard working for some reason. I actually have two keyboards I couldn't get working. It did this weird thing to where M would just be held. I don't know if it's that specific PS2 keyboard is too old or what, but that, that was one issue that I ran into, so I don't feel like I could get a Model M to work. I just wanted a tiny bit more authenticity, but that seemed to be not what ended up happening. To go even further, I could have taken a USB floppy drive, configured Linux and Pico 8 to mount and format floppy disks so it could load games and programs off and on them. I thought about it, but decided to not to do that because honestly, the scope of this video was already getting too big. So let's move on and away from hardware. But what about the games? Are they any good? Well, honestly, for being made up of what the website describes as micro games, Pico 8 has more games than you could reasonably play in a lifetime. And even with varying quality, you will struggle to find a game that I would call bad. I mean, let's start off with some of the classics. First, we got a bajillion ports of Tetris, because why not? I'm always down to throw down some Tetraminos. Then we have Dinky Kong, a full-on port of the arcade version of Donkey Kong. And you know what? With that 128 by 128 display, this actually looks pretty good and not too far off from the arcade experience. We have Qbert, certified arcade classic. We have Fight Street 2, couldn't find Fight Street 1, which means there's no way I'll be able to follow Fight Street 2 without having the context for the first one. So moving on. If you've got deja vu and never been to this place before, you may be interested in Drift Mania, a really cool racing game that relies on drifting in order to turn around tight corners. Let's see if you can have a good time with this one because your OCD won't let you stop playing until you're at the tippy top of the leaderboards. We have Bass, B-A-S, a Flappy Bird-like game where you're a chicken vaulting up the wall in order to avoid saws. And then we have Terra, an actually very fleshed out demake of Terraria. Okay, I get it. There's plenty of software to be played, but what about software that aren't games? You know, like a computer does. Well, Pico 8 does have its fair share of tech demos, which really look pretty like some of these ones. Pause for effect. Oh, I wasn't supposed to read that out loud. <laughs> Anyways, yes, there are plenty of games and tech demos that show off the graphical horsepower of its VM designed to run slowly. However, there is software for the Pico 8 that goes further beyond. I don't believe Pico 8 was intended to do any of these things at all, but at the end of the day, a programming language is a programming language. So I don't see why not. <laughs> For example, we have a piano simulator, a tiny animator, a tool used to create sprite animations, a palette maker for making your color palettes for your games. The Pico 8 word processor. Now this is what I was really looking for. That's awesome. A project scheduler slash spend profile calculator a file browser, a 7,500 word dictionary, and of course, the first three chapter of A Tale of Two Cities. That's right, Pico 8 counts as a damn e-reading device. And that's not even where the craziness ends because there are plenty of other software people are working on. And just because it's straight up a custom version of Lua, sky's the limit. So, so long as that sky is not higher than 32 kilobytes, of course. Okay. While this project is quite impressive, it's by no means the only fantasy computer around. You actually have a few options to get your alternate universe 20th century computer fix. In addition to Pico 8, there's a whole Discord with a list of many, many other fantasy computers out there, each with their own built-in limitations and fun quirks. Now, what should you make of this really weird show and tell I did for you? Well, mostly that's up to you, but one of the coolest things about these fantasy computers is when mixed with era-appropriate hardware and peripherals, it allows me and you to experience something that many of us were not around for, and that would be the 8 and 16-bit computing era, but with the same level of freshness that those who came before us got to experience. And yes, you can build a new Amiga or a new Commodore with some of those recreation board projects, but something that's cool about this is the flexibility of both hardware and software. I don't need to spend hundreds of dollars on one computer that will inevitably stop having parts for it made and someday just outright fail. So please, boomers and Gen X, let me play pretend a little bit, please. Also, if you're interested, go check out these projects and discords for yourself. You really won't regret it. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go play some Tiny Hawk.